Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for October 18th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, welcome guests, council, and administrators. Uh, Mr. Bridge will be filling in for uh, Ms. Burner tonight, so thank you, sir. You're welcome. And if you would call roll, please. Absolutely. Um, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. All present. Thank you, sir. Uh, tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Brian Cobb. Dear Heavenly Father, give us the guidance to help do with right for the citizens of the community. Watch over our first responders, our fire and EMS and our deputy sheriffs. Also watch over our military. And at this time before, after I say amen, I want to do a moment of silence for our ex fire chief, Charles Harvey, his wife, Catherine Harvey. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Session minutes for uh, September 4th, uh, 2021. Or October 4th. Or October 4th, I'm sorry. My apologies. Any discussion, council, on those minutes? Oh, did you get it? Okay. Yep. So we got the first by Councilwoman Eagleston, the second by Councilman Grimm, and we'll go with the vote. Uh, Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Uh, Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwall? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Uh, minutes passed 7 to 0. Thank you. And we're moving on to the minutes for the regular session of uh, October 4th, 2000. Um, motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eagleston. Any discussion? Any letters, sir? Okay. Um, we'll go with Mayor Lowry. Yes. Um, Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rookwald? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor, I mean, Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook? Mm -hmm. Passes 7 to 0. Thank you very much. Okay, we're dropped down to communications. We don't have anything listed under here, but I believe you. You want to break the rules of council here for the uh, interviewing of the applicant? He's mm -hmm. asking if the council wants to break rules for uh, Mr. Josh Mooney for Parks and Rec for an interview and Second. Motion? Yeah. Second. Okay, so, motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eagleston. By Ms. Eagleston? Yes. Okay, I'll just go with Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor, I'm um, sorry, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Did I miss someone? I did not. Pass the 7 to 0. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Moody's here today. But he's, he put in an application for the Parks and Rec Board in time. He just hasn't worked out on uh, either of our parts, I guess, if you will. So, uh, Council, if you have any, I'll just go down the line if anybody has any questions or comments for Mr. Moody. You're welcome there. So. Uh, he's favorable to be wanting to do that. He's got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Josh, give us a little bit of background. How long have you lived in New Carolina? Uh, I went to the Constitution 12. I lived in the 4th, 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 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 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 
you know a lot about parks. Okay. I saw you over there dunking on some kids a few minutes ago. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Taking the I mean, you know, I mean, it's only fair they were like ten, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I talked to you before. We, you know, we know each other. I, you know, that's great. I think you're getting involved, so you definitely have us. With all your involvement, you're going to have time. Yes. Um, I just feel he has the time, and he definitely has the interest in doing it. He's a volunteer. Actually, yeah. <laughs> he has a pulse. Can I say welcome, then? You can say welcome. Welcome. <laughs> so, count like, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I would be remiss if I didn't echo um, what Mr. Brennan has gone down. I am a little bit concerned about the availability. For not so much for golf season, I wasn't aware that you also were involved with um is it basketball? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will say though that the fall and first half of the winter Speak out of turn here, Chief. Um, if the shelter house is booked, can they look at the fire station if need for a meeting? Oh, sure. yeah. He, okay. He's always worked well with us. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, Council, motion? Someone. Second. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Eggleston to approve his. I'm sorry, who was the first? Uh, Mr. Grimm. Uh, Second, Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Noah Kelsey? Yes. Uh, Councilman yeah. um, Cobb? Okay. Uh, Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilman yes. Grimm? And we'll go to yes. uh, Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Yes. And then Vice Mayor Cook. You know you're Mr. Eggleston. Right? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, he said yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Vice Mayor Cook? <laughs> Seven to zero. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. We appreciate it. Um, you're welcome to stay for the whole meeting or leave whenever you want. So, thank you very much. Welcome aboard. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see. City Manager's Report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Mr. You, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll go through the uh, City Manager's Report. Uh, this is, we're reporting in October, but it is information detailing September, so we're always a month behind. So we'll start off with our police report with uh, Deputy Harris. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so for the month of September, uh, we have 203 calls for service. Uh, we patrol 4,543 miles from New Carlisle. Uh, took 42 reports on the 203 calls. Uh, we assisted 48 other calls um, around New Carlisle for other deputies. Uh, we had 21 criminal arrests, uh, 
A breakdown of those 21 criminal arrests would be four felony arrests on view, 15 misdemeanors on view, and two warrant arrests. Um, there are 79 traffic stops conducted. Uh, of the 79, 53 resulted in warnings and 26 resulted in citations. There were a total of 151 business checks and 138 uh, citizens in New Carolina contacted. Thank you very much, Council. Any questions or comments? Well, thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, I'm going to ask you this question again because I liked your answer so much while we were standing outside. Since you're newer to New Carolina, how do you like it? So everyone can hear your response. Uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier. Best job I've ever had, especially coming from the jail. It's a nice change of pace. That's great. That's good to hear. So we're, we're glad to have you. So thank you very much. Thank you. So, right, Mr. Bridge, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Harris. Thanks thank for you. joining us today. We appreciate it. And moving on with the city manager report, our fire, fire, fire and EMS report with Chief Trustee. Council, uh, citizens, uh, for the month of September, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 88 EMS calls in the city, 38 in Elizabeth Township. The division uh, responded to 17 fire-related calls and, and from the city and also one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, we had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township about the park due to medic 5-2 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls for uh, Pike Township and three mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Uh, we're still doing hydrant flushing. We are in finishing up area C at this time. Uh, we've been trying to keep people, the uh, citizens abreast where we're at, what area we're in. Uh, other than that, I can't find the question or comment from this. Where's area C? I'm going to post the video. I'd have to look at the map to show you that's where it is. I think that's the Zimmerman Edgebrook area, I believe. Okay. Right next to the D area. <laughs> Before the D. <laughs> <laughs> This would be yes. south of the A. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you take the detail. Oh, I like that. Okay. Anything else to say? Nope. A, B, 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 Anyone B, else? <laughs> no. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work, sir. Mr. Bridge. Thanks, Fire Chief. And moving on with the city manager report, um, our finance director report with Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. You're welcome. Council. Our uh, finance report for the month of September, revenue was $573,216.23. Our expenditures were $682,531.10. So our year-to-date revenue collected is $7,034,507.04. And our expenses to date is $5 million. $530,944.14. And on my summary sheet, it does have your statement of cash and your bank reconciliation. And I did want to jump over to, and then I'll entertain questions, the full report. Since the full has been um, officially closed in September, we are, um, it has a total year to date revenue. $7,418.73. Expenditures to, for the season were $94,732.26. We have $2,000 in pending expenses over ongoing utility, and we will we'll probably have about $3,000 in our insurance that is coming in soon. So we're still looking at a profit this year between seven and $8,000. And the last time the pool made a profit under a thousand was in two thousand seven. So it was a very good job. And I'll entertain any questions on the rest of the finance report. Obviously the hot summer helped a lot. <laughs> and the concessions yeah, were excellent. <laughs> they made a lot of money on their concessions. And I I will email that out to council. It doesn't look like it got into the packet for some reason. I do apologize. That was an honest mistake. Mm -mm. No, it's not your fault. I didn't. I didn't get a new clerk to council. <laughs> what? Oh, you need a new city manager for that. The clerk did not do that. Yeah. No, no, no. I said, we, can we get a new clerk to council? Oh, well, please. <laughs> I'm 
Ms. Harris, that's uh, covering, that's putting back any of the transfers that went in originally, correct? That's right. Those numbers that I gave you are not including the transfer. The transfers are always in the beginning of the year because historically it needs that first support. So your fund balance will be pretty healthy. It mm -hmm. might not require a transfer for next year's budget. Uh, but we always have to have enough so it never runs in the negative. Yeah. So if it's too much, it goes back to the general fund. It's transfers that mm -hmm. But the numbers I gave you were your actual revenue and your actual I got a few more things to add, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, I do. I just want uh, everyone to notice the income tax comparison. I think last time we brought this, we're up 15%, now we're up 18. 18.62% um, compared to last year, so that's good. And April, uh, you did a fantastic job at the pool. You always do. This year, you're knocked it out of the park, and we thank you. Um, it actually is going to pull a healthy, healthy profit this year. And that's a total testament to your ability to manage a fantastic place. So I thank you because you've done a great job. You're welcome. <laughs> sure. But, sure. It, um, before we do that, on the, um, the taxes, I'm, I think you mentioned this in the past report, but now that now that they're you know they're in full swing of dealing with our taxes, Mr. Wood, uh, didn't they say that they with, with them being able to check the federal database, they are catching a lot of people that have been not paying. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There we go. Mm -hmm. And they just started doing that within the past couple months. you got to have a many years of data to get to it. So we're actually probably going to see the benefits of that more as we go on throughout the year. So, and moving on. So, yeah, but we are having uh, a lot of success with them. Thank you very much. Sure. And who's on motion, Mike? Yeah, and something on the Finance Report. All right. And thank you for that. We'll start the vote with Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. And, uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. What we'll do with Mayor Lowry? Yes. And then we'll do Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. Uh, finance report uh, passes 7 to 0. Be safe, Chief. Bye, Chief. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. And we'll move on with the city manager report with our service report um, from Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Ms. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. Um, under Public Works Department, we have uh, authorized a contractor to paint the parking stalls downtown. Uh, we're just waiting for the scheduling. As a matter of fact, I saw Bethel and Clark County have their striping people out over the weekend doing uh, similar stuff. Uh, as again, we are going to keep Dura patching, trying to finish up a few potholes um, before the winter season hits. And the speaker system obviously is kind of delayed, but the installation is complete. It was. Uh, Utilized with the heritage of flight um, in part of their sound system and um, from what I understand everything it sounded great and worked good so I think for future stuff and um, on how it'll work it'd be great for the city. Um, the big thing with underwater department not much has changed still playing catch up but it's the infrastructure grant that I had applied for for the 2.5 million. Uh, the county development um, official and we were talking a little bit they're delayed in all aspects with everything so this past thursday was supposed to be the deadline for telling us if we were going to get that money or not um they're behind so don't know when that'll be i'm just staying in talks also with the county engineer who submitted those as well so i will give you an update as soon as i get something back from the uh, state and as far as the sewer department we're still clarifying some uh things with the clarifiers kind of weird how to say that, but um, you know, we are utilizing a lot of uh, OPWC funds and ARPA funds uh, to pay for a lot of their uh, restoration and repair work. 2021 road reconstruction and resurfacing projects, phase one of Fenwick has uh, been awarded to STERM. The project started last week. We are about 75% of getting the storm installed. They were finishing up the third of the four dry wells um, today. So hopefully in the next two to three weeks, uh, we will see that asphalt and hopefully some uh, seed and uh, straw and we'll be done with that project. Resurfacing is complete as well with Deerfield, South Scott and Sunset and Cambridge Court were done. They will be back in to adjust those manholes and um, do some minor touch up. And we are still waiting to get some berm gravel for the South, South Scott portion that does not have curb and gutter. I've already talked to a couple of residents that had concerns with that, and I said that we will get 
um, a berm truck in from the contractor and it will get those you know, ramped out so they're not such a steep drop off. And then um, again, Madison Street School demo. This was a big one. I'm not sure if you had it on yours or you want me to. No, go, go, go. Um, so obviously demolition is complete. The seating and straw has been complete and needs a little bit of repair work, but that's besides the point. Someone decided to drive through the, mm -hmm. the lot. Anyway, the total project cost was $171,496. It originally um, was about $8,000 lower, but they found a little addi additional asbestos of about $8,000. That was covered by additional CDBG funds, which left the city share for the total demolition of $2,136. And we had originally budgeted $52,000 for that project. Mm -hmm. And that is all I have on my report. I can entertain any questions on here, citywide, you name it. We'll give it a shot. Uh, I know you touched good. on the uh, striping of town. When they when they get that, are they gonna are you gonna stripe out here for like handicap spots and whatnot? These are not part of the the striping out here. Uh, we're still working on how to put those in and make them either van accessible because that takes a little more room. Mm -hmm. But these are not part of the downtown okay. one. But you're all looking at doing something here. We're just trying to figure out like that print that we had looked at some nine <coughs> months ago ish, somewhere right there, if that's gonna work out for us. Okay. Thank you. We re redid deer field. Is Falcon on your radar? Oh yeah, it's Falcon was on our radar this year, however, just didn't have enough money. Um, but Falcon is on the radar next year with uh, Villa and Henry to be the three streets that we'll, are, are gearing towards. But again, funding and what type of repair work we're going to have to do. I did notice on some of Washington, I think I uh, stated before, we, there was some clay that's pushing back up on the Washington portion that we repaved last year. So um, I, we have to reconsider some work on Villa and Henry on how we're going to do that. It won't be a simple mill like we did on most of our other streets through the spinning area, the Z uh, Zimmerman, Langdale area, we're thinking we may have to go deeper with the curb cut and go to zero near the center of the road just because of the amount of clay that we're finding down here in this section. So where I was normally getting four and five streets, I may only get two um, just because we're going to have to do more repair work underneath. What about, they're probably down at the bottom, Blue Bay. Um, Brubaker and Mill are just going to be pothole. They are uh, near the bottom. You said um, you were going to meet with the people who were the streets. Mm -hmm. I had to take a few more pictures on this past Thursday and Friday. I sent them some because at Washington and Villa there was a big loop of gravel and I have not gotten a response on that one and there was a trail. I had a couple more trails that I had for them to take a look at, but yes. Okay. But they did come back in late last week and sweep again. Okay. Mr. Tom. Also on the they wasn't using water. Um, I did follow them and, and here's our problem with some of these trucks and I'm seeing it with both companies. Too much water creates mud, not enough water is dust. So they were trying to feather the bumper sprayers along with the broom sprayers and because I told him, I said, some of it looks like a damp mess. And he's like, well, we'll cut back on a little bit of water so it sweeps it up, up into the hopper and not be so heavy. So it's kind of a middle in between. So if you see the strips, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. With two times next year, I think it won't be as much of an issue. But a lot where we see this is not in the area up here where you get good drainage. It's down here where we get settled. Good, Mr. Cobb? Yeah. All right, thank you. I did have one more off of uh, Mr. Grimm's. So we're, we're working on phase one of Fenwick. What do you think the odds of phase two would be next year for Fenwick? Um, I guess CDBG critical infrastructure is opening again. And we apply here, I think in November or December for 2023. So hopefully the stars align again and we get another 372 to $400,000. Okay, great. What, 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 what timeline do we find out on that? Um, my applic the applications have to be in I think by the end of December, I have to follow up, but typically we put it out for bid in mid to late spring for about a fall construction. Okay. 
Yeah. Again, thanks for the work you guys have done on street finance and all of you. Know, I mean, I know it's not fast enough for everybody, but I think we've done some pretty good swings at road. So thank you. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Mayor, and moving on with the city manager report, our planning and zoning report with our planning direct, uh, director, Derek Cutchinson. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, citizens. Thanks for coming out tonight to support the planning update. Uh, code enforcement, code compliance, just to say. Uh, we've identified so far 523 violations year to date, that's to the end of September. Uh, 974 code activities, that's communication, inspections, and reinspections. Um, this month, heading into to fall, we start to pick up from spring's usually a busy time, summer sometimes evens out a little bit, but the, toward going into fall, we start to get a little busy again. Um, mowings and, and cleanups and that type of activity starts to pick up. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, compliance agreements for exterior structure stuff, so uh, that's been pretty successful this year. Uh, zoning, we have 88 uh, received zoning applications here today. Uh, we did have a planning review board uh, meeting, uh, an applicant last week. Uh, it came in for a public hearing, uh, and it was for a rezoning of 200 East Lake Avenue. It was approved by the board, so it will be coming in front of uh, council November 15th for a public hearing and for, for you all to vote for that. Um, we also do have a, uh, a BZA variance request application in, but uh, like Mr. Bridge stated before, without a board, it's on hold until, until we, we figure something out. Um, so hopefully we could have some type of resolution for November so we can have, get that uh, variance in and get a look at it. Uh, economic development, uh, community development, uh, 210 Pike Street. Um, right now we're pretty much just waiting on Vectran and DP now to get out there and disconnect the, the utilities and we'll be ready for demo. Uh, and then shortly after that we'll move over to the substation for the demo for that. Uh, and then just our continuing projects that we kind of have going throughout the whole year, tool lending program still going strong. Um, I think today we lended out the gas uh, garden tiller and some blowers today, so keep busy. And that's all I got. Have we heard anything back on the uh, chip frame? Uh, so they have <laughs> not, um, like everything else, it's, it's being delayed a little bit. Um, talking to Clark County, though, they, they are still pretty hopeful that that's, that's going to go through. We looked, our application looked really good. Uh, so they're, they're being very optimistic uh, and hopeful on that. Mr. Patton? Mr. Hutchinson, have we resolved the problem over on Zimmerman with the gentleman with campers and boats in his backyard? So, uh, no and yes. Um, I mean, as far as the activity, uh, we have not personally seen boats. I know that I know that they're they may be happening, um, but uh, no, he did get a permit for a fence. Uh, still waiting permit for the temporary structure in the back. So. I mean, last time I went by there was a, another boat sitting back there. Yeah, yeah. Now these, well, uh, they're they're tough to prove. They really are to a, to a court. They are. I've had a lot of cases like that going in there, um, but uh, you know, we could have have them look back into it again and see what we can find. Are, are you are you going into? Can you see the boat over the eight foot fence, or or you just see them go in and out? Just a while, about a week ago, there was a boat sitting in there, pretty nice side. In the backyard. Well, yeah, I'll definitely have him keep his eyes out when he's up and down. He's I mean, there. I know he's put no trespass signs up there. That's going to keep the law from coming up. Yeah. Well, we can't look over the fence. Um, neither can law enforcement. So, um, as you know, as we say, it's just, it's really gathering gathering information and, and just keep well, it. I've got a nice um, ladder I can sit out in the street and climb up and get pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll not comment on that one. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Archinson, thank you for the report. And thank keep up the good work, sir. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Bridge. All right, thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Um, we discussed it in work session, but I'll also repeat it. It won't take long. Uh, the veterans' banners, um, I'll have to meet up again with uh, Chrissy Smith. Um, before I was out for a while, a short uh, phone call with her, um, and she said the vendor she uses having issues getting it, getting the banner material. Um, and another vendor she had was almost quadruple the price. So I'm going to re uh, go meet with her again and find out what our options are and then come back to the council so you guys can direct us with how you want that to go down, whether that be find a new vendor or do it next year or, or whatever the case, however you guys want to handle it. Um, VISS, which stands for Volunteer Firefighter Insurance uh, uh, Services, is it's a yearly thing we do for our firefighters. Uh, it's, a, it's basically um, some additional uh, coverages for them if they should get hurt for like... Um, you know, we'll just help them get through the issue. It's a relatively small policy to have. It usually costs us under $3,000 a year, which is why you guys don't get too involved with it. But I will be meeting with Fire Chief here probably uh, this week to kind of finalize some things and submit that onto them. So that, again, is a yearly thing, but just wanted to let you guys were doing it. Uh, Mayor's Court update. Have a lot, I've had a few questions about this since I've been back. Um, it has been delayed since I've been out a little bit. So we just got the laptop in, so I have to get the software for that. Um, this uh, laptop will be in the hands of the bridge group to get it all set up and then also install that software for us or, or walk through the company that needs to install it. Um, I still need to order uh, tickets. They're about a month out for those. Um, so um, we've actually got it up and going uh, for the most part relatively quickly. Um, so we are going to have some uh, delays on shipping as we're experiencing for everything. Um, but it is um, in the short amount of time we had to work with it. I think we did very good with getting it up, up and so far. Um, but right now we're at the liberty of things being delivered to us. I did have a short phone call with Chrissy Tomey, and what we're going to do is call a staff meeting, and I'm going to have Chrissy Tomey there, who's the clerk of the courts, and then sit down with Sergeant Lehman and myself and some deputies that we contract out with, and just kind of go over that bond schedule, get them familiarized, familiar with it. Um, but as soon as we are able to, we'll definitely let you guys know. Um, I, I would love to say mid-November, but I don't want to put myself into a, a hole. So, but it is ongoing. We still got some things coming in um, and we're still very excited about having it. So, yay. Um, potential uh, water shutoffs is the next bullet point here. So we had a gentleman come in um, last week and we've had the same procedures with how we do water shutoffs for a very, very long time. And it kind of made me, he made me think about it a little bit. Uh, what happened with his particular bill is he paid his first bill the month. He didn't, he didn't pay enough by like very little. And then we, our systems automatically triggers a second bill and then we charge you $20. And we went and shut this man off for like $22. So what that does is puts a lot of wear and tear on our people, our devices. Uh, if they go out and break a valve, we have to replace that valve. It could be three, 400 bucks. And if I'm misspeaking, please correct me. Um, so we have to start benefiting, really looking at the cost of shutting people off versus the, how much revenue we're actually down. So you know me, I already started doing some research on it. A lot of cities usually have like a dollar limit cut off to where they shut people off, whether it be 200 or 300. We know our average bill for most of our country, uh, customers that are under 100 bucks. We know that because we looked at that data for credit card processing fees. So. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to get with Mr. Kiko and some other appropriate people in the department, kind of look at our codes and suggest something to council to really not shut people off as much as they do. It's water. We're going to get our money. Um, they have to have that, you know, once we shut it off. So if we wait a month or wait two billing cycles, whether it be a $200 limit or a $300 limit, we're going to get our money once we shut it off. But it's also going to help some of our citizens maybe get by because we've all been in a position we have to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know. So, um, but if that's okay with council, we do want to look at some things and bring it to you guys. Uh, so that's something we'll have. I can't say for the next meeting, but relatively soon, that we can get it, get it squared away. Um, any questions on that? No? no? Okay. So potential new shelter house, uh, that is the application we did. And just like the chip uh, that Mr. Hutchinson had updated you on, um, Dirk, um, who we're working with from the county, he came in last week. I signed paperwork on that grant project that we will not use the funds for uh, any other project. They still haven't decided, um, but he says um, as soon as he knows, he'll let us know, but he has seen no indication that we're not going to get approved. Um, and just to piggyback off what Derek said about the chip update, he said the same thing. The contract actually starts December 1, so hopefully we'll know by end of this month or at least by mid-November, because the contract does state December 1, start 2021. So again, we're at the liberty of other people, but as soon as we know, and we're very excited about both those opportunities, we'll definitely inform council on that. 
Um, this is exciting, 2022 operating budget timeline. So we always wanted to get our budget done well in advance of the beginning of the year. So Ms. Harris has worked very hard on getting a draft to me. So I have that in my review now. We are requesting a work session the week of 1025, so council can get a look at that. Um, so that would be, let me get my calendar up. So the week of next week at some point in time, what is ever convenient for council as a whole. Um, and then what I was thinking, if, and I gotta get with Jake about this. Jake wanted some time to research this BZA ordinance a little bit more. We wanted to at least get an intro. So if he's okay with how it's written and, and leg, the form and leg, legality of it is okay, we can vote on that at that work session for that so our citizens not, his project's not being delayed much longer. Because it all has to do is sit a week once it's introduced. So is that okay with council? We just throw that legislation piece in with that, with that meeting for the work session? Looks like it. Okay. We'll call it a special meeting, not a work session. Yeah. So we, what we can do is, I've already asked Fire Chief permission to have it his place, so we don't have to worry about the shelter house being reserved. Um, this council wanted to have this on a, what day of the week? You're the business person here, probably. So. Um, let's not do the 25th. That way, if I have any reviews and questions, me and Ms. Harris will have a day that we can get together and finalize some things before to bring it to you guys. So that Tuesday, the Wednesday, the Thursday. Let's not do a Friday. No, no Fridays. No Fridays. You want to do a Wednesday? Wednesday, council. Do it. That schedule, whatever's for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I have a student you have four to five. Availability on the twenty. What time are you thinking? Whatever is convenient for you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna be out. I'm having eye surgery. Okay. On Wednesday. No, I can't. I'll be having surgery on my eye on Wednesday. What if we did it on Tuesday? You want to join then? You want to do it before? Can you come on Tuesday? Yeah. We want you there. Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday and the 26th. What time did you like, Mr. Bridge? Uh, preferral daytime if council had it, so we can don't have to be here so late. Um, but whatever, we'll we'll do what we need to do to accommodate Two you guys. Five. Three, three, five, three, three, five, three, 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 one. I have a student from one to two. You what? I have a student from one to two. Okay, well, he can't be here till three, so three be okay. Three, five. Just, you want to do three, fifteen? Just three o'clock. Three, three o'clock's good? Okay. Yeah. Three p.m. on the 26th, we'll have that at the fire station. And then we'll get that set up. No, I'm going to have to have that in the paper bag right tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Good way to be in my head. Um, you can't do it Tuesday. You have to do it like Thursday. Yeah. How about Thursday at the same time? Sorry, Mr. Cobb. Can you come Thursday even though you have an eye patch on? Yeah. Okay. Thursday? Thursday. So I'll have to, I'll have to get the legal ID in before tomorrow at noon for that to show up this Thursday. We can give a week notice. So the 28th. Yes. Yep. Sorry, guys. Same time on the 28th. Yep. 3 p.m. 28th. 28th. At the fire station. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get a motion. Yeah. Motion? So moved. Okay. Motion by Mr. Nikowski, second by Ms. Engelson. All right. Councilman Cobb? Yeah. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Cook? Yeah. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? That's Thursday the 28th. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And then we'll go back to Councilman Engelson? Yes. And then Councilwoman Nikowski? Yes. Uh, pass it to <laughs> zero. Okay, and then I'm also requesting a second one if council would like that. If not, we can knock it all out. Um, or, now that I look at my notes, um, we have a requested one for the week of the first, which is our regular scheduled council meeting. So even though we are moving work sessions to 6.30, maybe we just meet 6 and maybe 5.30 and knock the rest of it out before the 7 o'clock regular session. If needed. If needed. If not, we're going to have to meet on the second anyway, so we'd have two meetings in a row. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless you guys just want to knock it out on that one night and just stay here till it's done. Yeah. We we did it relatively in a decent amount of time last year. Right. I think we're all on each other's stage with we'll it. it. We'll get it in one day. No. Okay. 
Whatever it is, then. He has spoken. He has spoken. <laughs> so we're just going to scrap it. Okay. So if not, what we can do, too, is in the regular session, we can pick it back up during under miscellaneous okay. business, too. So we're good. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, what else I got going down the line here? Madison Street School site. I know Mr. Kiko had mentioned about this, but I did get a call last week. I was out at Speedway getting Mountain Dew. Shocker. Um, and I got a call from one of the deputies and asked me to go out there. So I went out there. And we had two juveniles driving a car, and they were in it. I mean, they were in it. They were back far in it. Um, I guess they were practicing driving and up getting stuck. Um, so um, they did ask me if I wanted to press charges. I said yes. Um, I haven't been back out since it's been removed. I don't know if the trucker, if the tow truck did any damage. Have you seen it since? The tow truck didn't do any damage, just the car. Just the car. Mm -hmm. So relatively not too much damage, but we do want to get that fixed. We literally just got the school down. You can still see the straw through the grass. So, you know, um, but that's the update with that, just in case council had heard of what's going on. So it was the juveniles who, like I said, just got their car stuck back there. City bus drivers? And we did, yes. Yep, yep. Yes, I did. Don't hate me, but you got to learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how it goes. So that's what happened over there. Um, so if any questions on that, just let me know. Uh, but if not, I'll move on down. Central cashier utility clerk positions, we will be actually now um, ha hiring a utility clerk. So that is the position who deals with the customer, the water service customers. We had a game plan set aside. Um, it didn't work out the way we wanted it to, so we're gonna have to revert and start back to square one. So with that being said, our central cashier uh, position will stay uh, with the same person who it is. And since Ms. Marshall is, um, We'll be retiring November 30th. We will be replacing her position now. So I know Ms. Harris, I think, is working on the job description. I got it done today. So we'll send that out relatively soon um, so we can get that new person hired and trained in a timely manner. Um, so it did kind of put a wrench on our little plan, but we'll work it out. We'll, we'll, we'll hire the best person for the job. Um, but like I said, if you guys hear anything around town, that's what happened with it. We will be hiring for Kathy's position now. And the, uh, one of the last things on the bullet point is community garden up uh, with discussion. I had talked to a few members of council last week about it. Um, we really just want council to kind of intervene at this point in time. So um, they do good things out there, they do, but unfortunately we're just in a zone to where it's zoned residential. So it is zoned R5 where it's at. So that is a lot of residential, really not a lot of farming. You know, we didn't let them have the garden there because of what it does for the community. Um, but they did have a new project and it's called a prairie. So it kind of sent me and Derek into like a research phase last year. I mean, last week to kind of figure out one, if it was allowed and two, what could we do to let, let them have it if needed. So we looked at all kinds of avenues for this. We, we truly have. So we've been talking with John Kraybacher. He is the director of the garden. Um, and he wasn't happy, but we have told them that it is a residential district. You know, they would fall under the tall weeds and grasses that we have, and that is anything over six inches needs to be cut. You know, so unfortunately, we would have to sit there and violate them for that prairie. Um, we had thought about recommending changing the zoning, um, but that is literally considered spot zoning, which is not an accepted principle that we like to do in the industry or for here. And what spot zoning is, is um, just imagine you're, imagine this is one big parcel of land, this interior here, and right where Lynn you're sitting is a different zone. We'll say that's a CB zone, not in the middle of a residential. That's called spot zoning. You don't put something there around a bunch of residential stuff. And that's exactly what's going to happen if we were to change the zoning in agriculture. Because every border of where it's at, north, south, west, and east, is bounded by a residential district. So when you have prairies and stuff like that, you have animals that would harbor coming, and it just generally doesn't look good. So. We have a lot of passion about that garden. Um, we can only do what our codes allow us to do. And when we run out of options, we go back to council and let them really just debate what's going on. So our hands are tied. We, we can't even change the zoning on it. Um, and then it's quite frankly, it's just not a good use to have in the middle, middle of a residential district. Well, thank you, Mr. And thank you for the information and the, and the research you have going on. We appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I love the community garden. I mean, it's a, it's a great asset for the city. I, mean, I love the whole content behind it. Um, I've never been a fan, unfortunately, of where it's located at that particular location. I had no problem back then. Was it, was it the one that was back by uh, Madison? Is that in the correct zoning? Uh, no, it needs to be in agriculture. But when you look at our zoning map, our agriculture is 
way out. It's it's outskirts. You know, I mean, I mean, Mrs. Putterball was the only house in the whole city that was lived in an agricultural zone. If that gives you perspective of where She's these are located. Yeah. So, but you do have to look at the good of the community and what it does. And you know, and it does. It does great things for the community. It's just at some point in time, we have to really, really get in control of, of what goes on over there. That's just really <coughs> where we're at now. Mm -hmm. If you're talking on this prayer, it's it's a. I, I don't fully know what what. what they want natural grasses to grow. They want to use it as an educational opportunity. So if someone wanted to go and look at what, um, like, look what kind of grasses were in Ohio. And it stays native. permanent like that. Yeah, native. So they wouldn't they wouldn't cut it. So it'd literally be a prairie. Just like out mm -hmm. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but don't you? I'm, I'm not against the uh, farmers market. No, no, no. But what I'm trying to ask here, okay, we run into pretty much the same problem with the corn and the tomatoes being high like that, them plants. Well, it says weeds and grasses, so the corns and tomatoes not a weed or grass, but yeah. It's but that's thing. agriculture. It is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're running the thin line here. Always have ran a thin line. But it does great things for the community. We're having a hard time swallowing the prairie idea. I love the concept. I love it. And I don't want to think I'm not, I'm not for it because I love the concept of it. I just don't like where it's at. That's it. Because of where it's located. Because like, if you ever go to the old Westlake site, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. It is resident, resident, resident. So I love the concept. I love the fact that getting out there lab, people can go and get involved in it. It's just not where, not where it's at. No, no I can't. Okay, and I can't talk on that. I just wanted to clarify the position. I mean, what they were talking about is putting it where the football field is, where nothing else will grow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what can you talk about? But um, honestly, it's, there, we came to council for a decision, and there's nothing for council to decide because there's no remedy for it. You can't. You can go for a variance, but they're not going to prove it. You can't change the zoning to agriculture because that's spot zoning. It has a minimum requirements for the acreage, but it just doesn't look good where it's at. No. Okay, so, so there's. I'm assuming what it comes down to, and this is going to be hard to say, but it's they need to it's not bad. It needs to be packed up and moved. Is that what you're getting at? I mean, that's part, council's decision. But what I'm saying is per the per city rules and laws, that it should not be there. Is that, I mean, correct? Is that a, that's a correct statement. Not, and I'm not talking by opinions or votes or, or you know what I'm saying, by law, the city's own rules, it shouldn't be there. No, uh, technically, no, it shouldn't. Okay. okay. Mr. Hutchinson? Um, and I just want to add, it, you know, the garden itself, when it, when it was just a garden, uh, was, easier to work around but the issue is it just keeps it gr it's growing it, they're outgrowing even though there's seven acres there, they're outgrowing what they want they want more structures um, they're now doing sales from there um, so it's turning in something more than just what it what initially it was, was. And, and given its location inside I mean, it's, you know, it's surrounded by homes mm -hmm. and, and again no I'm, I love the place but when you have rotting vegetables and, and, and tall grass, they tend to invite uh, varmint into the area, stunts, possums, raccoons um, that aren't good for the surrounding area. I mean, I have, I don't, I don't live too, too far away, but I have several family members that live across the street from it um, and down the street from it, and I hear, I hear, I hear them weekly. So again, I, I love the idea, and I, I agree with Derek. I think it started off good, and it's just, um, it's just, it's gotten really, really much. Yes. Yeah. Where, what part of the city are you Right up north? North, there's a second parcel up north. Or, yeah, most of them are north and south. You're not gonna see one west and you're not you'll see one east there's a small section mm -hmm. yeah there's a very small section on the very eastern border that's agriculture and 
a little bit down south, and then most of it's all up north, north of all the industrial. Mm -hmm. So if you reset, you set a bad example. I'm asking other council and administration, you set a bad example by letting it continue in a, in a, in a um, zoning area that it should not be. I think the issue is, like I said, when it started, it was just the crops, yeah. you know. And when you look at what it does for the community, we we can we can take that into account. But it's, we give them an inch, and they've taken a mile, to be honest with you. And then it went into greenhouses, and then it went into selling, and then it lit into all this stuff. And we have tried to get permits. We've tried to get all this stuff, and working with the director has been difficult to do all this stuff. Do they have to have a permit for the building? They, yeah. Well, they don't. Well, they submitted a permit, but I, I can't, I can't prove it because there's no principal structure there, so it, it's, okay. I, I can't prove them. So that's some of the things we look at when we do our code rewrite. Like we're looking at, do we carve out sections for these special needs? Because we can't approve accessory structure permit if you have no principal structure. That's just how our codes are written. Let mm -hmm. me put that in layman terms. Your principal structure is going to be your house. If you don't have a house, you don't need a shed. So that's the antiquated codes that we run into that, or that's what we're boxed in at. It's nothing personal against anyone. It's right. just, that's just where we're boxed in at due to how our codes are written, you know? Well, let me ask you this. Does, this, does this put us, does it put the city in potential, um, uh, you know, for legal action as far as, okay, so you, in either way, let's say the city decides that, well, okay, it's not in the right area, we're going to have to close the garden down. You're going to have to find a new home. Could they come to this? And let me finish this long question. Could they say, well, you allowed it for so long. This isn't right. We're going to get an attorney. Or could a citizen who lives in that area, like he's spoken about, says, you've got something in the zone that should not be there. I shouldn't have to live next to something that is not in the zone that should be. I want to, you know, go after the city for legal action for, for doing something they shouldn't be doing according to their own rules. Yeah, I'm no attorney. You can sue anyone for anyone nowadays. Sure. But honestly, if I'm the garden, I'm getting sued because someone sued me because of, it's, I don't, we've seen how people handle their hash hold trash over in those areas. So it, I don't think it's the garden bringing all these raccoons and stuff over. Believe me, we see the trash that people don't throw away. Yeah. Um, technically speaking, yeah, I think you got liability either way. The chances of someone doing it, slim to none. Sure. You know? Um, my only concern, like I said, is just it, it needs to be better well kept and there needs to be some limitations on it, like seriously, like it does. Um, they got the lease from the school. We don't own the land. We can regulate it on the zoning part of things. Um, if it would have just been a garden, it is what it is. But like I said, it's just grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. And that's where we're running into these issues because mm -hmm. it was never supposed to be this big. It was supposed to be just a small, small thing behind the school, and they got all the, and it's great they got all the funding for it, but it does. It puts us in a very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable situation. Okay. But we got to understand when they moved that garden from there to there, that was a discussion in this room with council. Mm -hmm. So council was well aware and was well aware of them moving up there. Um, so that's just where it's at i think limitations should have been set when it was agreed for them to go there as far as what you can and cannot do um so yeah we're in a rock and a hard space with it if you technically want to get with it you know i don't know if it's just a heart to heart with the director and those involved with it to be like this is what we got and this is what needs to stop we can do a cease and desist i mean if we needed to i mean we have a legal right we have attempted to get permitting from them we have documentation of that so um, it's not like we just rolled over and let them do what they want. We've attempted. It's just there's no on the other end. What about talking to, since Tecumseh owns the land, getting mm -hmm. Tecumseh, and I mean, I don't know if they're aware of this particular situation and the zoning and what's in place, and asking, you know, if you're aware of this, and then see where they go with it first, see if they address it, and if not, we step in. That's not for me to decide. That's for you guys to right. decide. Right. No, I'm, I'm throwing out ideas. So. Yeah. And, and they would have to be the applicants for yeah, any type of any type of filing. They they would have to be the applicants. The mm -hmm. school board would be. Okay. Unless their lease states they can. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. well, they would still ultimately have to sign off on the on the thing for filing. We'll talk later. But if the yeah. lease states they can, they're an interested party. Yeah. And they could do it. Yeah. Okay. Council, what do you want to do? 
voir ce que je veux dire. Ah, ça peut Where else would they be? They would have to go to an agriculture zone. I just think that we should have a really heart-to-heart uh, -heart about if it stays how it is or where it's at, then council needs to put some restrictions in place as far as what it cannot and cannot do in the future. It's either that or council should just ask them to move. The, the, the garden at Madison is still there. That's an off OA apartment, too. That's not even that's not right. agriculture, you know? You know, we wouldn't be the first city that has a community garden in a zone where it shouldn't be, by the way. Right. It happens all the time, especially with gardens. <laughs> so. Mr. Cobb, so I, can't, I can't see going against the city ordinance to what we have in place myself. I mean, it's all right for the garden. I don't have a problem with the community garden, but want to build a prairie, like Mr. Roblaw says, you're going to start bringing in more Wildlife. Pardon? Wildlife. <laughs> okay, yeah, wildlife, which is going to get into the personal property of the people that live right by there. I mean, I see possums going through my yard every morning. But we all know wild animals are coming in the city looking for food. But as far as I'm saying, I can't see going against the city ordinance against Mr. Uh, Hutchison and, and, and uh, Mr. Bridge. If we have a city ordinance we've got to run by. We can't uh, have them be these were obnoxious but can't have them, the neighbors complaining about it. We can't look at a blind eye because then John Doe comes down and says, well, I want this bill to have you let them do it. Well, we need to do that across the board 100% for everyone. I see what you're saying, 100%. Um, yeah, but that's, I don't know. My, my issue is just how much it's grown. That's it. And how much has grown, how much touch structures they got there, what they want to do, uh, to repeat myself. When it first started, it was a great concept. It gave back food to the community, but it's just grown. And no offense to them, but that's just, they, they, that's their goal is to grow it. But we've got issues that we need to internally control to manage their growth, to make sure that no one else comes and, you know, tries to mimic the same thing. Well, also, is it, is it fair to, to put that back on you guys to deal with daily? If you get someone who calls and says, hey, you know, I don't like this for mm -hmm. reason. Well, you know, the council decided to let it do it, you know, I mean, that, because they're not going to call us very often. They're going to call you, I'm just saying. Yeah, you Town Hall, 609 West Jefferson. Um, so as just a member of the, the, the Charter Commission, um, this is actually a, a hot topic I'm, I'm looking forward to discussing with you guys all is, is code enforcement. So the only thing that I would add to this is just think about your precedent that you're setting. So if, you, if, if we can't grocery shop our ordinances. So when you're envisioning code enforcement, it's you, you do take the totalitary, you know, the totalitary, uh, I can't get the word right, all the circumstances into consideration, um, but we can't just, you know, grocery shop, like I said, like, we can't allow this, but this is okay. So, you know, thinking about, you know, other nonprofits, you know, churches, you know, other businesses within the communities, I see a lot of things that I would, I would guess are probably violations. So, you know, just, you know, mentioning the boats and the RVs, you know, all these things need to come into consideration when, you know, thinking about this, you know, is just being that, that consistency, you know, across the board. But that's all I would add. Thanks. Right, Well, it's nearly impossible to do that with code enforcement, though. I mean, you got people with campers sticking out past the front of their house that we don't cite because what are they going to do with a camper, you know? So the thing with codes is they're black and white, but then you also have to interpret yourself, you know? Because if we really stuck to our codes 100%, there is no one, would, a lot of people wouldn't be in compliance. And that's why we're looking at the code rewrite because they are so antiquated. 
so antiquated. Right now, we can go tag anyone. If you got a bag of mulch on the side of your house, we'll tag you. So that's really what it comes down to. So you're almost forced that groceries, I see what you're saying, but you have to take into account, you know, how antiquated the codes are. They truly are. But again, that's why they're working on making them more modern. Mm -hmm. It's a good, it's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at this point in time, we just, we can't approve anything for them. So any time that they go and want to add anything, um, we'll we'll have to take corrective action to it. Including uh, the prairie, right? Huh? Including the prairie? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so. So moving forward, you're saying, unless something was said by us, you guys are going to start we, with tagging and. I mean, not that we're, we're not, we can't let them do the thing. We can't let them do the prairie. It's against everything we have. There's no either, there's no even wiggle room on the interpretation. Nothing. I mean, it is blatantly obvious the prairie can't go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as it moving or anything, that that's a decision for you guys to have to really discuss. So they have a temporary building with no permit. They have a greenhouse. Is that what it is? They have a yeah, and, and they did. John finally did submit a, a permit or an application to me, but I, I can't approve it. Can't approve an accessory structure without primary. Was that the permit that we flat out told him they needed a permit for, and he still just put the thing up? Yeah, I remember. Well, it was up before. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Get or was the that the sign? Well, after. Yeah. No, the sign. They they got permission for the sign prior. To gotcha. That. But that um, but that they did, and I, I keep hearing of a, a pavilion, possible pavilion, and I know he wants he had a, a barn or a shed that was donated at one time that he wanted to put up out there. Um, it just, like I said, and then, then there's the piles of uh, dirt or soil or comp I don't know what that stuff is, but mulch. But um, it's just a, you know, starting that up out there. Yeah, well, I will just go two different ways here and let council decide. I mean, does anybody want to make a motion? I'm asking. I'm telling you. Does anyone want to make a motion to move the entire site or move them off the property since it's not done? Can you take them? Yes. You don't own the property, and you discuss having them there. So I don't know if I'd move them. Say what? You 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 discussed having them there. When they moved from that, wanted to expand over here. Mr. Craybock came here and discussed this move with the council. Okay. So I don't know how that's going to look if it's now we're forcing them to move out. So just playing devil's advocate. No, I'm just and I'm yeah. just asking if that's what they want to do. I mean, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I, I don't want I don't I don't want them to move. Right. And I also think it's time that they maybe. How about okay? How about this? this I mean, because you know, based off of what I've, they're obviously growing more food than than what they need. Um, you know, they're selling it at the farmers market, which is great, and they're donating a, 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 quite a bit to to Mr. Max. Um, you know, so it's it's great, you know that that it's there. But I also think that driving by it almost every day, you can. Um, okay. Well, how how about we do this? How about we do this? Since you, I think that everyone understands the prayer. You can't understand that. How about we do either a special meeting or a work session with us? Because this. Oh, you know, no, you're good. Uh, okay, work session exactly with council. Good. As many members, it's it's um, it's on that. I don't know how many people are on that board or committee. And, and just stop that. And, and that's been I, I've I've reached out to to uh, to the director multiple times. In order just to do that. Just to sit down as a group and discuss future plans, just so we could plan ahead. And I, I never got a really a response right. to that. Mm -hmm. well, that's not good. That's why we're here. <laughs> well. It, 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 it's, I, it, I, Mrs. Nowakowski is not the director. Of this. Mrs. Nowakowski is not the director of the garden. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. No, just so everyone, right. just so everyone. But it's not going through the board. That's what I'm saying. Do you meet me? Maybe let me throw this out. Maybe have a meeting with the mayor and vice mayor. Come to the office and we sit down with the key players of the garden. Do the initial meeting there and Jake, and then see if we need to take it for the rest. That way we don't have to worry about legal advertising. We can do it on our own schedule. We're not quorum, and we'll just knock it out. 
What you can do is do a motion to maybe allow them to do that. I don't know if you need to do that. You guys need, no, you don't, because you're not quorum. You're fine. Yeah, yeah you're good. You and then maybe just break the ice that way in a small, non-public setting before we bring it back to something like this. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I'll work on getting those yeah, well, set up. Yeah, see when, uh, when you guys have time and Jake has time. And, and then Courtney throw, with throw you, I think, Mr. Things. Graybacher. Okay. Yeah. All right. Back Mr. Kahn. Back to Mr. Kahn. <laughs> Are they still my family, the community garden over at Madison Street? Yes. Yeah, they're still there. And plus they're doing it over here on Westlake. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood when you said they moved. Well, they expanded, I guess. Or maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Sure. All right. All right. Sir, back to you. Well, thank you. Um, upcoming legislation for council uh, codification numbering updates and, and employee generally code section update. That I am still trying, uh, trying to have that probably the second week in November. Um, so, other than that, that is the city manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge on the entirety of the city manager report? All right. Do you want my hard copy? <laughs> uh, comments from the members of the public? What's not coming up? What's mad? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to play it off as long as possible. Hit Mike my agenda, please. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. There you go, Mike. My agenda's coming Very up. Important. Well, I need that back, so i got to read the titles off. Resolutions, the... none, and ordinances. <laughs> it's not funny. This is serious business up here. Uh, ordinances. Mr. Uh, Clerk, would you... Uh... Yes, I will read those for the record. So, uh, we have uh, three ordinances up for a vote on November 1st. That's the next meeting. <coughs> Excuse me, of Ordinance 2021-38. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pools of Ohio for the administration of said policy. <laughs> ordinance 2021-39. Uh, that's an ordinance, this is wordy. An ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances. Providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances and repealing ordinances in conflict therewith. Uh, then the last ordinance we have, Ordinance 2021 40, that is an ordinance amending Chapter 1246 of the codified ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding policy. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. And then additional information trick or treat is on Saturday, October 30th, 6 to 8 p.m. in New Carlisle. I believe uh, Bethel Township is uh, parked on the exact same time, so make sure you buy lots of recent cups. Be good. Uh, also, open discussion for any uh, simulated issues. Let me go to Mr. Cobb and then to Mr. Bridge. Go ahead, Mr. Bridge. Oh, I just need some motions that we talked about in work session. So, work session no longer. Regular session starts at 6 30. That's the first one I need. Motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Rodwell. We might have to give that a little test round and see how it goes. Yeah, so we'll start that November 1, next meeting, right? Is it within 15 days? No, well, motions are effective immediately. Okay. So we're good. All right, yep, it's fine with me. Okay, so we will start with. Oh. November 1, don't we have that? I thought we were doing that. No, we're battling through all on one day on the 25th. Okay. Yep. And if we have, we'll have some time to finish it regular session if we need to that night. Okay. Okay. So just so everyone's clear, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the work session that starts at 6 and regular session starts at 7. We're just kind of a regular session starts at 6.30. So we're not doing the double meetings. Uh, so we got first Eagleston, second with Roadwald. So we will start with Mrs. Nowakowski. Councilman Nowakowski? Okay. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Uh, Council Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilman Grimm? Yes. Uh, Councilman Roadwall? Yes. And Councilwoman Eagleston? 
Yes. Passes seven to zero. And then the second motion I need would be to host the joint government meeting so on 131 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Mr. McCaskey. Uh, Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman uh, Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Uh, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilman Eagleson? Okay. Yes. And then we'll do Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. Uh, measure, motion passes 7 to 0. Yeah, I'll shoot him email email tomorrow. Anything else? Got everything. Make them good. All right, Mr. Cobb, back to you, sir. Mr. Bridge, mm -hmm. can you tell me what the outcome is down there at Abe's building over the floor? Uh, so yeah. waiting on them to give me the quote to repair. I put it in their, their hand. Okay, they said they're going to have someone come in and repair it, and that's be the best option for them. So that's where we're at with it. I mean, they had theirs. No, I, I got you. Yeah. I, I heard that the building owner got a quote. That's, that's all we got? That's all I know. I mean, I heard the amount of I'm, I'm waiting for them to send me stuff. I told them what to do, so I'm not chasing after them. Right. What else? The uh, coffee and donuts uh, the other Saturday seemed to be a pretty good situation. Thanks to all that uh, participated, particularly Peggy for her excellent coffee along with Mr. Grimm adding on to it. It was up for four days, man. Yeah. <laughs> what was his coffee? He likes it strong. Trucker special. <laughs> All right, anything else? Motion adjourned. Second. Oh, that's me. Hold on. Did you, did you have something? <laughs> Mayor, did you have something? I did not, sir. Do you guys want to talk about my raise? No. Okay. Motion no. adjourned. <laughs> that's good. Who got the second on that? Mr. Graham. Awesome. Uh, Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. You want to call me? I'm going to. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Yeah. And Councilman Cobb? Yes. Uh, no raise. Oh, well, that's all right. You good? Yeah, we're good. We're well, adjourned. adjourned. Safe evening.